God. Come on, shout Hosanna. Give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords your best praise. Come on, wherever you're watching us right now, on behalf of Pastors Andre and Jenny, a very warm welcome to Faith Today all the way in Buffalo City. We're excited to have you on with us tonight, and we know that tonight is your night in Jesus' name. In fact, right from the beginning of tonight's program, I want you to write in the comment section, tonight is my night. If you're on Facebook, write it in the comment section. You're on YouTube, write it in the comment section. You're on Faith Now, write it in the comment section as well. If you're on DSTV, you're missing out a little bit, I wanna encourage you, get out your mobile device, get out your laptop, get out your iPad, Get out, get on Facebook or YouTube. Continue to watch us on DSTV, but interact with us in the comment section. We'd love to see you. We'd love to interact with you. I know that tonight God has a word for you that will touch you and change you forever in the name of Jesus. I see we've got Tony Governors on with us on Facebook. I see we've got James Broadway all the way in the US of A. Love you, James. I apologize, James, for the longest time. I thought that you were from the UK, but you actually messaged me and said, I'm from the US. So a very warm welcome. All the way in the US of A. We love you. Teresa, great to see you. Reshma Moodley, we love you. Uh, Desiree's on with us as well. Gloria, thank you for jumping on tonight. Christine Alexander, so wonderful to have you. Hit the share button, tag someone in the comment section. Tonight is gonna be a supernatural night in the name of Jesus. I'm not here alone tonight. Tay, are you ready for tonight? I am ready for tonight. Welcome our family online. However you may be joining us tonight, it's so great to be with each and every one of you. We love you so much. And I want to even, from, from the beginning, from the onset, start getting that faith stood up because tonight your miracle is here. Tonight your breakthrough is here. Even as I've seen people declaring in the comments, tonight is my night because everything you need is, is in the presence of God. Yes, everything amen. you need is going to be right here tonight if you just say God I am ready God I am expectant have that expectation rise that faith stir up on the inside of you to say tonight is my night for that which I believe in God to do and he will do it in your life you know I really want to encourage you tonight to open up your heart and to have an expectation for the Lord to touch you for the Lord to change you for your life to never ever be the same again because the Word of God brings a change of story if you need healing in your body you're watching the right channel if you need healing in your body you're right you're watching the right broadcast night whether you're on YouTube on Facebook or on DSTV you're on the right channel because let me tell you something those other channels can't get you healed but tonight God is gonna use this channel for the glory of God he's gonna touch your body he's going to change your story in the name of Jesus and so again I want to encourage you get into the comment section with us on Facebook and on YouTube so that we can see you because as God begins to move tonight we're going to begin to minister to people in the comment section any prayer requests that you might have write it in the comment section already because we have anointed Facebook ambassadors and YouTube ambassadors that will reach out to you and will pray for you tonight and you're going to see a miracle in the name of Jesus Brad Jazan you guys are locked and loaded ready for tonight are you ready I'm expecting I'm ready looking forward to a powerful night tonight and you know I really want to encourage your online family wherever you're watching from have an expectancy for God to do yes. something tonight. You know, I'm expecting and believing for those who are tuning in online, if you're watching on Sky 594, if you're watching on DSTV, Faith Now, if you're on YouTube or on Facebook, wherever you're watching from, I'm believing that the Lord's going to lift people up tonight, Amen. that the Lord's going to bring on. people across tonight, that the Lord's going to bring people through tonight, the same way that the Red Sea was parted for Moses, the same way God can part Red Seas for you, the same way that people walked on dry land, dry ground, the same way you can walk on dry land and dry ground, the same way when Moses hit that rock and spoke to the rock and water gushed out, the same way God can make it happen for you. The yes, same way on. He fed them with manna from heaven. Let me tell you something. The same way He can feed you whatever's happening around the world. Do not be distracted during this time. Fix your focus on the Lord. I'm believing come tonight on. that the Lord's going to show Himself strong to you. Hallelujah. That you're going to stand firm in your faith. And let me tell you something. You're going to have a testimony to share before the night's even out. I'm believing that things are going to happen in a powerful way. That you're going to be infused with power. I want you to type come in the on. comment section. Infused with power. It's not my night to be infused with power. That you're going to share a powerful testimony me before this night's out and you're going to testify and you're going to give him glory for God will be glorified through that testimony so we believe for a powerful night welcome to all of you wherever you're watching from tonight's going to be good come on amen and tonight is going to be so good welcome faith family wherever you are watching one from we want you to know that you are so welcome it is a joy it is a privilege 
for us to be here tonight. I know that God's going to do something amazing in your life tonight Amen. so that you can go out there and make a difference in somebody else's life. And a scripture that I've really been meditating on is Isaiah 40, that, which says, He gives strength to the weary. And I really want to encourage you, maybe you're feeling a little bit weary. He is going to give you strength tonight, Amen. strength, Amen. supernatural strength. He's going to infuse you Praise with that supernatural strength. And I believe God's will for you still stands. He wants us to go from faith to faith, from victory to victory yes. in Jesus' name. Tonight is truly going to be your night. Come on, I believe it. Even as Josanne has declared it, tonight is going to be your night. I saw so many of you writing in the comment section. Let me, let's me let give a shout out to our Facebook family and our YouTube family. If you're on Dear Steve and you want to shout out quickly, get out your mobile device, get out your iPad, get out your Android device, whatever it is. On Faith Now, get on now. Leave us a comment in the comment section. We would love to shout out to you. You're our Facebook family, our YouTube family, our online family. We love every single one of you. You're so dear to our heart. We've seen how you faithfully followed Faith Today every single night for the last 800 and something days. I don't even know what the total number is, but you've been so faithful and I know that the hand of God has shown Himself strong on your behalf. And tonight is going to be unlike any other night because God is always ready to take you higher. We need to learn that about the Lord, that He's ready to take you higher. Never settle with just where you're at, but be in a place of expectation, as Pastor Brad said. Be in a place of, of, of hunger that God, hey, you've done amazing things in my life, but tonight I'm ready to move higher. I'm ready to move that next level. I'm ready to move to that next position. The word that I love using at the moment is catapult. I'm believing that the hand of God is going to catapult you into your destiny tonight, that your destiny will be defined because the word of God has the power to change any story, has the power to turn any impossible situation around in the name of Jesus. So we're going to go back into a time of praise now. I hope that you're ready. I hope that you're charged. But before we do, Psalm 150 says this, praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with a trumpet sound. Praise Him with a lute and a harp. Praise Him with a tambourine and a dance. Praise Him with strings and a pipe. Praise Him with sounding cymbals. Praise Him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Come on, wherever you are, rise to your feet and let's praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's praise Him.
tonight to stay at that same level you didn't tune in tonight to stay where you're at come on wherever you are for the next 30 seconds open up your mouth and give Jesus some praise wherever you are in your home maybe you're there by yourself lift up your hands and give him some praise if you're there with your whole family in your home as well come on lift up your hands and give Jesus the highest praise he is good and he is mercy it endures forever there's no situation he can't turn around there's no dead end in Christ there's no way where he can't make a way there's no dead end he can make a way for you tonight he's the way maker promise keeper he's a light in a darkness his word tonight is going to empower you it's going to charge you it's going to strengthen you something must change tonight in the name of Jesus and I know that I'm speaking to hungry people tonight I can already feel it in the atmosphere that something is going to change in the name of Jesus so are you ready that's the question if you are ready I want you to give me an indication or give us an indication in the comment section on Facebook on YouTube as well on faith now we have a comment section on faith now as well write in the comment section I'm ready and throw some fire in the comment section and say I'm ready for tonight let that be your level of expectation that hey I'm ready to receive all that God has for me he has not changed one bit he is the same God yesterday today and forever Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever just as he touched people throughout the pages of Scripture that same Jesus is ready to do it tonight in the name of Jesus come on let me see you in the comment section I see Reshma is right on it tonight I am ready I see a number of you uh, Georgina thank you for logging on 
I see we have somebody from Pofeda as well. Thank you so much for jumping on. Tandiswa is on with us as well. There's some people that are on YouTube. I feel like sometimes I leave the YouTube family hanging. So let me quickly get onto YouTube. Lulu, thank you for jumping on. Berna, great to see you. Moleki is on with us as well. If you guys see anyone, feel free to give someone a shout out. But I don't want to, Sean as well on YouTube. Desiree Hester's on YouTube as well. Josanne, if you see some, give them a shout out tonight. Yes, we are, I see we got Allison watching from Cape Town. Welcome, Allison. We've got Reshmi. We also have Carissa watching. We have Cece watching, Tony watching, Eleanor watching, Tammy watching, Tony saying, God bless you. Eleanor saying, my fantastic four. Oh, shame, that's yeah, very sweet of you. Desiree Slater watching. We have Shireen Pillay watching. And I, I can see it's Shireen, you can't wait for the Faith Dome opening, so that's Come awesome. Uh, we also have Lindani watching. We also have Logi watching, Tambakazi watching, Lesejo watching, Gloria watching. Oh, it is so awesome to have to all have of you me. watching. Thank you so much for letting us know. Come on, hit where the heart button tonight from. if you're on Facebook. Let's let let's let's cause a problem for Facebook tonight. Hit the heart button, hit the like button, do what you need to do, share the broadcast, tag someone in the comment section. You know someone that needs healing. I want to encourage you, tag them in the comment section. Because God said according to his word that he sends forth his word and it heals. He sends out these words and it delivers people from their destruction. Whatever you're facing tonight, your answer is found in the atmosphere of the Word of God. It's found in the presence of God, where the Spirit of God can move, can quicken, can touch you. And I'm telling you, you're watching the right thing tonight in the name of Jesus. Speaking of the faith dome, we're busy, we're busy currently this week. It's been a week of prayer and fasting. They'll put the graphic up for you on the screen right now. We're on day four of our week of prayer and fasting. I want to encourage you, as you can see the dates there, we finish on Sunday. If you haven't been uh, praying and fasting with us, I really want to ask you, take the next couple of days, start tonight or start tomorrow until Sunday and pray and fast with us. We're believing for a move of God at Faith Revival 4.0. We're consecrating ourselves. We're laying out our lives down at the feet of Jesus. And we're saying, God, come and touch our city. Come and touch our nation. Let there be a global impact. Tonight, uh, or yes, rather today for midday prayer, our prayer point was zeal and boldness to come upon the body of Christ. Fresh zeal and fresh boldness. That even amidst threats, even amidst persecution, Lord, endue us with fresh boldness to proclaim your word. Let Faith Revival 4.0 be a time of refreshing and reviving. Let people catch fire and be shot into their destiny in the name of Jesus. And so it's been powerful. I really want to ask you as well, make sure you join us for midday prayer. We're praying right here in this venue every single day, Monday through to Friday. Saturday, we'll take a break. Sunday, we'll be praying during our faith worship slot. But 12 to 12.30, we're praying fire prayers here. God is moving. God is touching people. People are experiencing miracles. Even as they're praying God's agenda first, God is doing something in people's personal lives. And so I really want to invite you. Maybe you want to start with us starting tonight. Pray and fast with us for the remaining leading up to Sunday. We're believing for a move of God. Speaking of a move of God, are you ready for Faith Revival 4.0? I want to give you a little taste. I know that some of you have seen this, this particular rolling, but I want to give it to you again because there's going to be a move of God come the 24th and you are personally invited. So are you ready to check it out? Here is Faith Revival 4.0. Revival demands hunger. So if you are hungry for the power and the glory of God, some of you need to take off tonight. Some of you need to get loose tonight. Some of you need to run tonight because we are at the brink of a massive revival. The shaking determines what's gonna happen afterwards. And so we stretch into our future and we grab a hold of everything complete. It's no longer I who lives, but it's you who lives in me. Use me for your glory. It's when you yield to him that God will use you to shake nations. Come on, guys, if you have not registered yet for Faith Revival 4.0, where have you been? What are you doing? Right now, the details are on your screen right now. The QR code is there. You can simply take your mobile device, scan it. It's completely free. Registration is free. There are no entry fees or anything like that. This week is free. We're inviting you. There is going to be a move of God. You've been faithfully following this channel throughout the past couple days. Well, not even couple days. It's been many days. <laughs> You've been following faithfully. 
why not book this week and come down to Buffalo City and gather together with us we're ready for a touch from heaven we want to meet you as well please don't just be that person behind the screen I know that there's many of you that are all across the world you might not be able to get you there are people that are making their way here all the way from the US of A Pastor Andre and Jenny actually just touched down in South Africa and so we're very excited about them being here but I really want to urge you and I want to invite you the four of us we want to personally invite you I know Pastor A has been pushing it but we want to invite you want to extend the invitation come and join us for faith revival 4.0 between the dates of the 24th until the 31st it's going to be a time of fire God is going to touch you and change you I'm telling you something there's going to be an explosion of his power and I don't want you to miss it so the dates right now you can send us an email faith revival at myfaith.com as well send us an email you'll get an automated response where you can register there's everything you could ask for there accommodation we've got specials as well for all of you we also show you where we do transportation from the particular accommodations as well so everything is there we have a, a person who's very competent who monitors the email who will reply with you engage with you if you have any questions there is no reason to miss it. Brad, I know that you're expecting as well. Man, we're fired up. We're ready for this thing. I'm super excited and I really want to encourage people to register. That, that QR code that's on the screen is so easy to go and quickly take out your mobile device, scan that QR code. You can register. It is so simple and so easy to register. You can register your whole entire family on there. Go and register. Go register your spouse, your children, the youth, the young adults. You can go and register there. Come expecting for a move of God. This is Come not on, just a yes. week of a conference. This is revival. Amen. And as we've been praying here in the venue for revival, for I know this isn't, hasn't been about a conference. This is about a move of God. It's not just for our city. We've been praying for our city here and for our nation. But we believe that it'll happen in your city, wherever you're watching from, or from around the world. It'll happen in your country. It'll happen on Come your on. continent. So we, we believe that this week of revival meetings, that's going to spark a fire on the inside of that person, whoever comes, whoever's attending. That fire will fall upon them. That they'll catch a hold of that revival fire. Yes. And wherever they're from, they carry it back. And then when they get back onto that continent, when they get back into that city, town, wherever you're from, from, that the fire would hit that place, that there would Amen. be change and Come transformation. On. That even when you know the Lord brought people out of Egypt into wilderness, back into Canaan, yep. they didn't feed on manna in Canaan, they fed on the promise of the good land. That's what they fed on. So you're not going to be going back to something that was destitute, back to something that was a desert or a worldly experience. A wilderness experience worldly <laughs> wilderness experience yes. we believe in that the fire is going to hit you and completely change and transform your life that you're going to be infused the supernatural power Glory and strength to, to go back and transform your city to go back and transform your school I want to encourage you Friday night is going to be an incredible night with NXT yep. it's going to be a powerful night every morning every night it's going to be a powerful time so you got to register I want to encourage you scan the QR code send us an email register it's going to be a powerful time I really believe Revival 4.0 is not going to just meet your expectation, but it is going to far super exceed your Amen. expectation. I really believe that with all my heart. And I started thinking even the other day, our son Samuel, is, he was, when this whole journey started, he was very, very small when the daily broadcast started going on TV and I started looking at photos the other day. Now he's completely changed. And I started to think about you, our family. We've been on this journey for a very, very long time. We have been on this journey together and we would love to meet you. I know that as you come, as you sacrifice and as you do various things, organize accommodation and come, I know that God Amen. is going to super exceed your expectation. And I truly believe that you are in, going to encounter God in a yeah. real way. He's going to show you things concerning your future. On, you are going right. to be radically changed and impacted. You cannot, you cannot afford to miss this week That's i really right. believe that it's going to completely transform and impact your destiny it is going to completely change your life forever yes. amen. amen amen and even as jazan said you are online family you've joined us now it's over 800 days you've faithfully been watching you're a part of this you've seen it all you've been through it all with us and we want to see you this has been set up for you to come and join us in South Africa, in Buffalo City, South Africa. Come and join us. And even if you've already registered, I want you to go ahead and put it in the comment section so we can see who's coming and we can see who's already registered. Go ahead and say, I have registered. Because we want you to encourage you. Go ahead and register. Go oh, ahead and make you. those plans. We want to know who's coming so we can wait 
in anticipation to meet you, even as Faith Revival 4.0 kicks off, because that's really going to be a wonderful time. God's going to do something amazing. Even Amen. as this week we've spent in prayer and fasting, that unity, there's so much power in this unity that we've come together, sp specifically set this week aside, just praying and fasting for God to do something yeah. so, so great in this coming week. You know, that's what I've been so blessed with by seeing all of our online family. You know, we had our church, uh, we have our church coming every single day to pray with us during that 12 to 12, 30 time slot. I've been blessed by how many of our churches come in, how many of them are hungry. But I've also been blessed when I've been watching on Facebook to see all of you that have been logging on and praying with us. Over a hundred of you on Facebook, I know on YouTube as well, praying and interceding with us, getting prepped and ready for all that God is going to do. I really love this scripture and I want to read it to you because I believe this is what's going to take place. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 2, it says this, After two days He will revive us. And on the third day He will raise us up and we shall live in His sight. I really, I really truly believe that during Faith Revival 4.0, it's not going to be a glorified click. It's not going to be about a private club. No, it's going to be a place where people are going to be revived, where people are going to be raised up and shot into destiny. Just as I remember, I actually mentioned it last week, Judges chapter 15, as, as Samson gathered those 300 fox, he tied them in pairs, lit their tails on fire, and sent them to plunder the Philistines' field. And, and the whole camp of the enemy was burnt to the ground. I believe that people that come from all over the world come here. Amen. You're going to be ignited with fire, and you're going to be sent into the enemy's field and you're going to burn it down in the name of Jesus. And the church of Jesus Christ will arise in glory, will arise in power, will arise in the anointing of God and the authority of God. And then we'll see a shaking come to our government. Then we'll see a shaking come to our municipality. Then we'll see a shaking come to Johannesburg, Pretoria, Durban, all across the world, Uganda, Mozambique, wherever you're watching from, in the UK, in the US, wherever. I believe that a shaking is going to come because when a people will humble themselves before God, and will seek His face, God will come and do something miraculous. I'm telling you something, you need to register right now. One more time, the QR code's on your screen. Let it be there, take out your mobile device. Let it be your faith statement even. Even if you're saying, I'm not sure how I'm gonna get there. I'm not sure how I'm gonna make it. Let it be a faith statement. God, I'm gonna register for this. And I believe you for the finances. I believe you that you'll send a destiny helper across my path who will say, hey, are you going to that conference? Let's go together in Jesus' name because God is able to do it for you. So I really want to encourage you, shoot us an email right now. The email address is faithrevival at myfaithtv.com or you can simply scan the QR code. Whether it's you can come for only one night, whether you can come for the whole week, it doesn't matter. Get here. And I don't even know if we've mentioned this, but during the nighttime sessions, during the, our nighttime session, which is from 6 and it'll probably finish around 9 or 10, we will also have Kids Church, which will be open. Because I know some of you might be saying, hey, what about my children? This might be an excuse. You might say, I've got kids. I, how am I supposed to come? We have kids church. Pastor Brad and Josanna, <laughs> they're the ones who actually lead it. And I know that even the kids that go there, it's not going to be a glorified thing where we just take care of them. They're going to be imparted to and something's going to happen. I really want to encourage you, if you're a parent, if you want to be traveling through and you're thinking, you know, we can't come, we've got our children. I want to encourage you. It might be the end of school holidays. Maybe you're homeschooling. I want to encourage you, bring your kids with. Extend their holidays by a week yourself. Bring them with. Hey, let them on. come and receive something from the Lord. We receive so much from the schools and the education system, but let me tell you something. What you receive from the Lord, that will stand forever. Let every man be a liar and let God be yes, true. Amen. When the world are lying through their teeth, God's Word still stands true. God's, still, God's Word still stands strong. And I want to encourage parents, please, you can register your kids. We have a kids section available. There's faith kids available. So we're going to be looking after those kids downstairs in the venue down there. And you know, it's going to be a powerful time. It's not just a time of babysitting and singing Kumbaya or singing Father Abraham and many sons. There's laying out of hands down there. Kids getting full of the Holy Ghost, praying in other tongues. Kids getting up to pray. Getting Kids getting up to preach. It's a powerful time downstairs. I want to encourage you. We're going to see a nation completely shaken by the power of God. And these young ones, this next generation rising up, going up into the youth, the young adults into the generation that you see before you, this is the generation that will be there to bring glory unto God. And I want to encourage moms and dads, really, I want to encourage you, I'll urge you, bring your children with you. The Lord said this here in, in, the, in the book of Luke, Jesus said this here, never hinder a child from coming to me, yes, for right. God's kingdom realm belongs to them as much as it belongs to anybody else, because these children will demonstrate to you what faith is all about. Yep, and I want right. to encourage you, this conference the Word of Faith is going to be preached, but more than that there, 
that the fires of revival will be imparted into your children. They will carry that fire. They're never too young for the Holy Ghost. They're never too young for the fire. I want to encourage you, moms and dads, bring your children with you. Do not let them be a hindrance from coming through to faith, through to faith revival. Bring them with you. Be a part of something great. Be a part of something that when you go back, that your children will shake that school, that yes, your children will it. shake that that's city, it. that your children will shake that play school, that your children will shake that high school, that varsity. Allow the Word of God, allow this time in this revival for your children re to receive the fire of God. Amen. That's the, I want to say one more thing concerning faith revival, and then we're going to get into a time of worship, and then we're going to get into the Word of God, and we're going to minister to all of you at home tonight. Everyone that's in the comment section with us, we're going to be ministering to you as well, so I don't want you to go anywhere. But this is the last thing I really want to say concerning faith revival 4.0. It's not going to just be some conference that you come and then you just stay the same. No, it's going to be a revival. That's why we didn't call it Faith Conference. We called it Faith Revival 4.0 because we're going to see a revival come. People are going to be touched and changed. This past Sunday for Faith Worship, I preached the title, These Are The Ones. And that's our prayer, that the same will be said about all those that come and attend. And if you're unable to, if you're in another country and you can't make it, you can watch online and be touched and changed still. But our prayer is this, that people will point at you and say, These are the ones who turned this world upside down. These are the ones that turned this country upside down. This, these are the ones that when darkness was prevailing, all of a sudden they arose and shone for the glory of God and things turned around. And so I want to invite you one more time to come. It's going to be a powerful time. With, uh, I want to also say this, husbands and wives, come as a married couple. Receive the anointing. Get under the anointing. I'm telling you something, marriages are going to be touched and changed forevermore. Businessmen and businesswomen, come and be filled. Come and be touched. God will speak to you concerning the vision of your business. God will give you a word. He won't just instruct you by His word, but He'll impart to you by His word. And everything's going to change for you. So I can't wait to see you. Faith Revival 4.0. We're going to be standing at the door waiting for you in Jesus' name. We're waiting for you on the 24th. It's going to be amazing. So I can't wait to see you there. Are you ready to worship tonight? And then we're going to get into ministry. We're going to get into the Word of God. And something's going to be imparted into your spirit tonight. Because it's time to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. So wherever you are, rise to your feet. Lift up your hands to the Lord. He is worthy. He is precious. He is perfect. He is glorious and powerful. His majesty is unlike any other. He has no rival. He has no equal. He is truly worthy to be worshipped. Let's worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Let's worship Him.
Tonight. Come on, wherever you are, lift your hands in your home. We're going to go back to Wendy now. There's an anointing flowing tonight. His presence is coming into your home. I just wanted to take a moment quickly in your homes, wherever you are, whether you're with your family, lift your hands and worship it because as you sing, your presence is heaven to me. His presence comes like a flood. He comes to touch you and to change you. Everything that you need is in the presence of God. As you worship Him, there's a healing anointing that's beginning to flow tonight. The anointing is on the song wherever you are lift up your hands and we're gonna sing it again your presence it's heaven to me come on sing it Someone right now as you're worshiping is being healed in their back, lower back pain. You're being made whole even right now as you're worshiping God. We're going to continue to sing the song because something's happening in the atmosphere. But even right now, the word of the Lord is coming to me. In the, the kidneys, kidney pain, be made whole right now in the name of Jesus. Kidneys that, that are so far off that you need a supernatural turnaround. Maybe they, maybe they're, they're so far gone, you don't know what you're going to do. In the name of Jesus, I pray for two new kidneys for your body tonight. In the name of Jesus, whatever you're believing for tonight, your answer is found in Jesus Christ and His presence is here tonight. Jesus is not troubled by your trouble. He is ready to bring a turnaround for you. He is well able to turn your impossible situation around. Any unturnable situation, He can easily turn it. You're one prayer away from your miracle. You're one prayer away from your testimony. You're one prayer away from your, your, your miracle, your testimony, your breakthrough, that financial breakthrough that you've been praying for. It's found in the presence of God. He is here tonight. He is here tonight. He is moving in your homes tonight. That woman who wrote in the comment section, I'm having my baby next week. Ma'am, I speak to you even right now. No spirit of fear will mark you, but the spirit of faith will mark you. All will be well in the name of Jesus. Your pregnancy will be supernatural. No complications. Your child is ordained for this hour. So I speak to you, ma'am, even right now. I speak to your husband even right now. No fear will come upon your mind, but it will be supernatural from start until finish in the name of Jesus Christ. 
wherever you are, we're going to continue to sing. Your presence is heaven to me. Come on, let's sing it wherever you are. Any pain that's in your body even right now in this anointing, the presence of God is here. Don't go away anywhere, Wendy. The anointing is on you tonight. There's something that's flowing. There's something that's happening tonight on the band. The anointing is so evident tonight. But allow the Lord to come and minister to you tonight as you get on your knees and worship Him. Pain is leaving people's bodies right now. Points of concern are being turned around right now. Some of you, you've been in the most unrestful situation. You've been in the storms of life. But tonight, I hear the word of the Lord coming unto you. Peace be still in the name of Jesus. Every tribulation and trial that you've been facing, tonight by the power of His presence, it's being turned around in the name of Jesus. This is not where your story ends, ma'am. This is not where your story ends, sir. Jesus has more for you. And if you'll just open up your heart, come on, if you feel His presence in your home right now, give us the confirmation in the comment section on Facebook and on YouTube and on Faith Now. If you feel His presence, just say, I can feel the presence of the Lord tonight because children are being touched right now. That's what I heard the Lord say to me. Children, children that have been questioning the presence of God, questioning the authenticity of an existence of God. As you're watching even right now, kids, I speak to you. May the glory of God come and touch you in your home. Little ma'am, little sir, may the glory of God come and touch you and change you. Let the fire of God come and settle upon your head tonight because the same fire here is coming into your home now. The same anointing here is coming into your home even right now. In the name of Jesus. Some of you, I feel that I feel that a river is beginning to flow even right now. Come on, it's a river that's beginning to flow even right now. A river, a river of living water. Father, grant unto every viewer divine visitations tonight. Grant unto every viewer a visitation from heaven that changes everything, that marks them for the rest of their life. Even right now, oh God, I pray, begin to visit people in their homes, visit people in their cars, visit people in their work areas, wherever they're watching tonight, I pray, begin to encounter them now, oh God. Touch them and change them in the name of Jesus. One last time, we're going to sing it. Your presence is heaven to me.
Mataha. Father, in the name of Jesus, every single person that's watching online now, I want you to lift your hands before the Lord. If you can pray in the Holy Ghost, I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus, you're a businessman, a businesswoman. You've been thinking that this is the end. This is the time that my business is going to go under. It's over for me. It's over for the company. You're thinking about those employees. I want you to know it's not a time for your business to collapse. When things are collapsing around the world, it's not a time for you to collapse. It's not a time for your business to go under. It's not a time for your business to fall right now. Your business is on the rise, ma'am. Your business is on the rise, so in Jesus' name. When things are crashing, when things are collapsing, your business will not crash. Your business will not fall. Your business will not go under. In the name of Jesus, we speak life into that business in Jesus' name. You're thinking of all those employees, all those workmen, those workwomen that you have employed. I don't know why I see this here. This is what the Lord's showing me. I see people sitting there at a sewing machine. There's sewing machines. Tons of sewing machines. There's sewing machines. Men and women sitting behind them. They're sewing. There must be a sewing place or a material place. Sir, man, that business will not go under in Jesus' name. It will not collapse. It will not crash in Jesus' name. We speak life and turn around to that business in the name of Jesus. And the same as it was with Joseph. Same as it was with Isaac. When they worked their way from the bottom of the pit, when Isaac went and redug the wells of his father, even when people have spoken devastation over that business, so man, people have spoken devastation over that business. They've tried to fill in your wells, even other businessmen and women have tried to even take it out from you underneath your lap. People have filled in those wells. So too, you'll watch God. Watch God how He'll empower you to go and redig that well of that company. It will not collapse, but we speak life over that business now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I don't know who this is for tonight, but the Lord had downloaded this to me. Proverbs 4 verse 30 says this, that a sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. Any jealousy, any envy, any resentment, it's like rottenness to the bones. It says in another translation, it says that emotions will corrode. It will be corruption. It will be like cancer to the bones. Any person fighting cancer, any person fighting de degeneration of the bones, in, in particular to the neck, to the spine, to discs, slip discs, degeneration of any bone ailment in the body. Now in the name of Jesus, we speak life and a life abundant in Jesus' name. Restoration into that back, into that neck, into that spine in Jesus' name. Father, now in the name of Jesus, we speak turn around. Turn around in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke that degeneration of the bones. We rebuke that cancer. That spirit leaves now in Jesus' name. I think that the spirit of faith would arise on the inside, that we would see that turnaround come in Jesus' name. That the person is bent over double, that person is not able to walk, that person is having to use crutches or a wheelchair because of the degeneration of those bones. It turns now in Jesus' name. And Father, we speak life into that back, life into that person now in Jesus name we think that shift things shift things change Amen. and as Pastor Nal was sharing I want you to know that those things that may seem irreversible those things that may seem impossible that it reverses tonight for you in Come Jesus on. name in Jesus name that you would truly stand strong in the Lord and in the power of his might in the name of Jesus thank you Lord Jesus in the name of Jesus even if, uh, it, sorry, brother, I want to quickly speak to Mad Magdalene. Magdalene, I see you in the comment section and you said that your child is busy fighting cancer. Magdalene, tonight, I had to interrupt Pastor Brad because I feel the Spirit of the Lord speaking to me concerning you, Magdalene, Nazarene, Peters. It's time for you to step into a dimension called violent faith. It's time for you to step into the dimension of violent faith tonight because your daughter, or it's your baby. I'm not sure if it's a girl or if it's a boy. Your baby girl. Yes, it is your baby girl. Tonight is your night to step into the realm or the dimension of violent faith. The sure. faith that takes, it portion, it's, takes mm. its portion by force. Yes. The faith that knocks on the door of the unjust judge until that unjust judge comes and opens the door. The kind of faith that tears a room open. A tear, there's no room to get to Jesus, so they go into the top of a house and rip a roof open. The kind of faith that doesn't take no for an answer. I'm telling you, Magdalene, I speak to you tonight. Yes, Time for you Jesus to get into that dimension and that even as you, your comment 
for you to change your comment and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, tonight my child is healed. Tonight my child is delivered. There we go. That, I see you there. I choose to believe nothing less. My baby girl is healed. She is set free. Come on. Every single one of you on Facebook, like her comment even right now as a sign of agreement that that child will be a testimony, that that child shall not die, but your child shall live in the name of Jesus Christ, that every plan of the devil to try and kill your daughter, even right now, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Every fiery dart that's been shot against that child, to try and stop that destiny, to try and halt it, to try and stop it, to try and hinder it. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now you had to stop this whole program to speak to this one lady. I speak to your child in the name of Jesus, where the doctors have said this will be your story. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word offers a different story. So even right now, I lose the authority of your word. It heals. I lose the power of your anointing that can heal in the name of Jesus. I speak to that baby girl and I command her body to be made whole that foul cancer that foul leukemia whatever it might be I rebuke you in the name of Jesus I take authority over that spirit of infirmity now and I command it to lose your daughter and let her go in the name of Jesus as you continue you and your husband Magdalene every day father in the name of Jesus my child is healed my child will live and not die my child will fulfill a glorious destiny every day that you do it starting tonight your child will get strong and stronger and stronger and this time next year you'll be testifying in the name of Jesus we'll be testifying on faith today and say look at what the Lord has done in the name of Jesus I, I just had to stop you Pastor Brandon I apologize but God is speaking to that little girl tonight speaking to her family this is not where the story ends that every bit of trouble that the devil has caused you and your family yes. where you and your husband have wanted to give up I declare even tonight, it's not over in Jesus' mighty name. It's not over in Jesus' name. Just believe. You are not troubling Jesus tonight, Magdalene. I speak to you personally tonight. I feel it consistently. To speak to your heart tonight that, hey, you're not troubling Jesus. Jesus is not worried. Jesus is not troubled. Jesus is not doing something else. He is here ready to touch you. And He spoke to my heart concerning you even right now. And He's speaking to you through me. Even right now, if your daughter is there with you, lay your hands on her and command her to be made whole. If she's in a hospital, when you see her in the hospital, command her to be made whole. Lay your hands upon the sick. And the Bible doesn't say they might recover. The Bible says that they shall recover in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to know tonight, as now I was speaking about that there, I mean, there was no mistake that Pastor Now interrupted me because I wanted to speak to people today who felt like giving up thought they're growing weary. Magdalene, that's you and your husband. There's other people out there. I want you to know that we have to take things violently. The Bible says, the Word says that the kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. In the midst of that operation, in the midst of that scan, in the midst of that doctor's appointment, in the midst of an x-ray, in the midst of whatever you may be going through, you have to take it by force. You have to say something. You have to speak something. You have to declare something. You have to act upon the Word. And tonight I'm believing that the Lord's going to Restrengthen people tonight. Reignite a fire on the inside of people tonight. That He'll anoint your head afresh with oil in the name of Jesus. That you truly will stand strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. People are being full right now with a fresh fire. People are being anointed afresh right now with oil from heaven in Jesus' name. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Magdalene, even as you hold your daughter right now, in the name of Jesus, we speak, turn around in the name of Jesus. And we speak to that foul spirit, the devil. We speak to you. You loose your hands off of that child in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you even as it was for the day of Samson. It was as if fire came upon him and those ropes were loosed off of Samson. I thank you that the hold of the devil is broken and loosed off of that child now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you that you infuse a, a bold strength, a new strength to come upon Magdalene and her husband. That they'll walk through these doors here at the Great Faith Dome for faith revival with that daughter of theirs to come and testify, to stick it to the devil. That he doesn't have the final say. That we are the house of faith. That we have the final say. God's word is still true. Let every man be a liar. 
and the God then the, and the God of this Bible be true and you'll walk through these doors into this dome I see it I know the four of us we see that there I see that I believe you see that anybody needing a testimony here tonight anybody having prayer requests tonight as Magdalene declared that there I want you to change your prayer request to a declaration Declare your situation tonight. Declare it done in Jesus' name. Let's shift it from a declaration, from a to a declaration, from a prayer request to a declaration. Tonight, as we get into the word, if we may get into to the word here tonight, I want to share this with you because for us to stand strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, and as we minister throughout to people, you keep declaring that the Lord is gonna turn your situation around. I want you to know what the word says in Isaiah 7 verse 9. It says it this, unless you stand strong or firm in your faith, you will not stand firm at all. If you're not standing firm in faith, you cannot stand. You will not have a leg to stand on. You will not be established. And so us, for us to be strong in the Lord, we have to stand firm. We have to stand firm in our faith. And Ephesians 6 verse 10 tells us so greatly about this here, but I want to highlight that word strong in Ephesians 6 10. That word strong in the Greek is spoken about, it says, en dunameo. And en dunameo, this word en in the Greek speaks about in, into. And this word in a, in a, in a dumeo, this dumeo part speaks about dunamis. It's a dunamis power. It is a dynamite power. It's dynamic. And when you put these two together, it's a supernatural power, a dynamic power that must go into something. It must go into a vessel. And God has designed you and me. He has designed us as vessels for this power to be imparted into. That's how God created us. He designed us and created us to carry this power, this endunameo, this dynamic power, this dynamite force, this power that we carry so that we can truly be strong in the Lord and in the power of His mind. And I want to, see, want to show you this from Scripture tonight. Because this power is explosive power. I want you to see it's explosive. This power is not just an ordinary power. It's a power that's explosive. And if you turn with me to Romans chapter 4, this is the story of Abraham. And our Abraham, he never grew weak in faith, but he grew strong in faith. And I want you to see this from Scripture tonight. Because this is explosive power. power. It's filled with explosives. It's a divine energy. This is what Abraham operated in was the power of the Holy Ghost. And if you look at this here in Romans chapter 4, some people may start off with strong faith. Some people might not start off with a strong faith. We've all been given a measure of faith, the Bible says. But it's up to us to grow that faith, to strengthen that faith, to develop that faith, to quicken that faith. But look at Abraham here, Romans chapter 4, 16 to 21. I'm going to read this to you. It says this here from the New King James. It says, Therefore, it is of faith that, I might, that it might be according to grace, that the promise might be received to all of the seed, not only to those of the law, but also to those who are of faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. For it is written, I have made you to be the father of many nations in the presence of him who believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which are not as though they already were. I want you to speak to some people tonight, those things that may seem dead in your life, those things that might not be existing in your life right now, the same way Abraham called them into existence. We not yet a name and claim it, but we had to declare it. We had to speak it and call it as if it already were established. God took Abraham outside and showed him the stars, and he said that this is how many, how many descendants you would have. God was showing Abraham something. Maybe what you have to do is get a picture of that thing so it's in front of your face all the time and get a scripture that's backing up that thing so you have something that is scriptural to stand upon. Kenneth Hagin once said this, that if you have no scripture asking God for something, if you go before him in prayer and there's no scripture backing what you're asking God for in prayer, there's no use asking, asking God for it at all. For there's no backing to it. There's no power to it. There's no foundation that you can stand upon. But if you have a scripture pertaining to that word, pertaining to that promise that God's given you, like Abraham, God gave him a vision and a dream, but he gave him a word. And Abraham stood upon that word. Although Sarah might have laughed and giggled in the tent, let me tell you something. Something grew and something shot into her spirit that she believed God. And everybody that mocked them, they said, let every man be a liar. Everyone could be lying through their teeth, mocking them, teasing them, saying things about them, but they stood firm upon the Word. They stood firm in faith that they were established and things shifted and changed. Verse 
18 says this, Abraham, who contrary to hope, in hope, believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was promised and spoken over him, so shall your descendants be. Verse 19, and not being weak in faith, and not being weak in faith. Again, and not being weak in faith. He did not consider his own body as already did since he was already 100 years old, all the deadness of Sarah's womb. I want you to see that Abraham's faith was not always strong. He was not weak in faith. Even though he was about 100 years old, he didn't consider Sarah's body or a womb as weak or as dead. But listen to this. See this in verse 20. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but it was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. I want to speak to people tonight who maybe have unbelief in their hearts. Maybe they're thinking that maybe that promise that God gave them, you know, it's not going to come to pass. 23 years ago, do you think if Apostle Andre stood in this facility when it still housed wool, when you still still saw the oil and those marks on the floor from the wool on that wooden floor, do you think that he had unbelief in his heart when God shared the vision? Oh God, this vision's too big. It's going to require too many finances. There's too many people who, it's not going to require that. They're from you. If God gave you the vision, He'll send the provision for it. What you have to do is change that mindset from what the world is saying. What you have to do is fix the mindset on the Word of God. If God said it be true, let every man be a liar. Let the Word of God be true. Let God's Word come forth from your mouth. Let that be the shift and the change. Abraham said this, For I'm I'm fully convinced that what God had promised, that He is well able to see it come to pass. See, Abraham, he strengthened his faith in the Lord. Sarah, strengthen her faith in the Lord. And I want you to see this tonight. Those who are unbelieving, maybe those who have been doubting, may something shift and change tonight in your heart. May something shift and change tonight in your family, in that ministry, in your business. May things turn for you and your company in the name of Jesus. I want you to show this here. I want you to show you this here in 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 3. It says this. Paul was writing this and he said that he was thankful to the church for, for sending these brothers, these brethren, people were thankful to Paul for sending these people to him, to them. And he said this, yeah, because their faith was growing exceedingly. I want you to see your faith can grow. You see, you don't have to say it the same measure of your faith. God gave you a portion of faith. He's given to every man a measure, but it's up to you to grow that faith. You can either have weak faith, little faith, no faith, or you can have a strong faith. And in order to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, You have to have a strong faith, a strong faith, that of Abraham. And I want to share the story to you because there was a story in the Bible of someone who had strong faith. You know, Bartimaeus, he was blind for many years. He wasn't blind, Bartimaeus, but he was Bartimaeus. But you see, for all these years that he was born blind and lived blind, it didn't question, we didn't have to question his faith. He knew that there was coming a time where something was going to change. He kept his faith strong. Even when he heard Jesus was coming through the streets, man, people told him to keep quiet, to shut up, to be silent, to be silent, to be still, to stop bothering the teacher. But you know what? That faith of his, that strong faith, that violent faith, I'm speaking to someone tonight, that violent faith got the attention of Jesus. I want you to know tonight that your violent faith will get the attention of Jesus. When your faith is strong, it gets the attention of Jesus because Jesus said, that man that's calling out to me, that man that's crying out to me, that man who has a, has a strong faith, that man who's got that violent faith, that man who, who's not keeping quiet and others are telling him to keep quiet, that man is making a stand. Bring him unto me. And when Bartimaeus came to him, Jesus had asked Bartimaeus, what is it that you would have me do for you? Bartimaeus said, Lord, that I may see. And what was it according to? According to what? His faith. I want you to know tonight, be it according to your faith, that which you believe in the Lord for, that which you entrust in God for, that promise that God's given you. I want you to know that it will come to pass. Do not lose hope. Do not give up. Do not grow weary. Do not bow down to the unbelief. Do not bow down to the customs of this world. The Word says this here in Proverbs 24.10, that if you faint in the day of adversity, that your strength is too small. You have need of courage. Your weakness often, often becomes the excuse to quit. Don't allow your weakness to become the excuse to quit. Don't allow that there. Don't allow the naysayers, those who are, ne- are the negative reports. 
We believe in that that report changes in Jesus' name. That report is going to shift. It's going to change in the name of Jesus. I want you to know, even as the Word says, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We have to get the Word quickened into our spirits. It's that Word that shifts and changes things. I was thinking back today, and the Lord reminded me of this here, to a few years back, when one of my wife's uncles, Jazan's uncles, he was brutally attacked and assaulted at, one, at his company. He went to go check up on the company, and these men came and attacked him, and they beat his face in, smashed his face in completely, smashed his face in, beat him, and assaulted him, and they dragged his body from where the business, the company was, all the way across the field and left him lying on a railway track left for dead but one of the family members had a vision of this huge angel watching over him at night and somebody was sent to go out to go and check up because he hadn't come and they found false teeth lying at the business place when they took a walk the next morning they found him the next morning hours later lying on that field something and someone had moved him off those railway tracks into an open field let me tell you something tonight that man stands strong. He stands firm because he has a faith on the inside of him. He, the doctors even wrote on the medical report when they did an operation, they had to rebuild not his jaw structure. They had to rebuild his whole entire face. It wasn't the Rodney that we used to see. It was a different Rodney. His face was completely smashed. But let me tell you something. He had a violent faith. He's a miracle man. I'm looking at people today who have a violent faith. People who are going to be called a miracle man, a miracle woman, a miracle child. I'm looking at people tonight who are not going to give up. Even though things have been said about you, even though maybe, you, maybe you've been attacked like that or been assaulted, maybe your business has had things slandered to you, I want you to know tonight that things are going to change for you in Jesus' name. The same way it happened for Bartimaeus, the same way it can happen for you. The same way it happened for Jazan's uncle, the same way it can happen for you in Jesus' name. You're not going to grow weak during this hour. You're going to go strong in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to leave this with you in closing. The same way that God brought the people out of, out of Egypt, out of the wilderness, and into Canaan. I want you to know that they, they weren't feeding on manna like they did. They were feeding on the good of the land. I want you to know tonight that God, He, he wants to bring you out of whatever you're in. Maybe you're already in the promised land, but I want to know there's, there's more for you. There's better. There's greater. Because when I read in, the, in my Bible, and I don't know about you, they carried grapes the size of basketballs. Between two men, a cluster of grapes, they carried it out on their shoulders. I want you to know tonight that there's a next level for you. There's another place for you. There's another dimension. In the same way God brought those people out, the same way God brought brought Bartimaeus out, the same way God brought Jazan's uncle out, the same way God can bring you out tonight, the same way God's bringing your family out tonight, the same way God's bringing children out tonight. And these are two things that you can do to implement that there, is to intensively crave the Word of God. Intensively crave the Word, and you'll see yourself stand strong in the power of the Lord. 1 Peter 2, 22 says this here, that those people who crave the Word of God like a baby craves the milk, you craving spiritual milk that you'll be nourished with the Word. So we have to intensely crave the Word of God. Number two, skillfully act upon the Word. We have to skillfully, impact, skillfully act upon the Word. We have to act upon the Word of God. And tonight I'm believing that there are people who are going to intensely crave the Word of God and skillfully act upon the Word. And I see people tonight shifting and changing. Father, I thank you that people shift and change tonight that we see people take off those garments like Bartimaeus did, that people step out from whatever condition they're in, yes, whatever ailment yes. they're in, whatever, thing, whatever place they find themselves in, a family, a marriage, a business, that they step out of those marriages tonight, that those marriages will thrive in Jesus' name, that those businesses will prosper in Jesus' name, that those children, Father, that things would shift and change in the name of Jesus, and that we will see things shift and change, that they will be testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you that you would be glorified through it all, that you would get the glory, that you would get the honor, that you would get the praise, yes. and that we would stand strong in the Lord and the power of your might. In I, Jesus I really name. feel that even as Pastor Brad is ministering, even right now, as he's preaching the word, faith is grabbing the hearts of people right now. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. I see that there's some people that have jumped on on Facebook and it's your first time ever. Welcome. 
I want you to know something, and I want to emphasize the exact scripture that Brad just read. Proverbs 24 and verse 10. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. I believe that this scripture is prophetic for the hour that we are living in because we are in the last, I would dare to say last seconds of time. Because John wrote in 1 John that this is the last hour. If that is the last hour, we're in the last seconds of the last hour. Jesus is coming back. And in this hour, the church of Jesus Christ needs to arise in fire, arise in power, arise in the anointing, arise and shine for our light has come. This is the time for us to arise. But you see, it takes strength to arise. And we've alluded to it, and I'm going to read it again. Ephesians 6 and verse 10, Paul was speaking and he said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. He didn't say try and be strong. He didn't say, if you feel like it, be strong. He didn't say, well, your situation might be this, then you can try and be strong later. No, he said, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. He wasn't suggesting to us. He wasn't leaving it up for option, but he's commanding us. And you see, we need to come to the place where we command ourselves, where we open up our mouths and we speak to our situation. We speak to our mortal bodies. We speak to our family. We speak to our business. We say, in the name of Jesus, be strong in the Lord. Right now, write that in the comment section. Be strong in the Lord. Just write that. And as you're writing in the comment section, you're decreeing it and declaring it over your life, over your children, over your family, over your personal life, over your business, over your career. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might because let me tell you something. Now's not the time for you to faint. Now's not the time for us to give up. Now's not the time to relent. Now's not the time to lift our foot off of the accelerator. Now's the time to press in more than we've ever pressed in before because God is about to do something in the remainder of this year. You're not going to hear us stand here or sit here rather and say, man, you're just going to get into autopilot. You might go up, you might go down. No, for the children of God, your path is getting brighter. It's going to be well for you that as you hold as you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God you're going to see the blessing of God the blessing of God is going to come upon you the blessing of God is going to overtake you in the name of Jesus that you're going to see the hand of God that you're going to be strong and in the power of his mind that you're truly going to see the goodness of God in the land of the living in the name of Jesus that the goodness of God will not just be on scripture if you're still with us on Facebook I don't know if there's some issues on Facebook but on YouTube on DSTV wherever you are be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. You see, the goodness of God is just not going to be on the pages of Scripture. It's going to be in the pages of your life in the name of Jesus, that you're going to have overwhelming testimonies of the goodness of God. But it demands a strength. It demands a strength to come upon you tonight. That's why we felt to minister this to you tonight. For those of you who are sick in your body, the Word of God is already healing you as we're speaking to you. But now a strength needs to come upon you. Not a natural strength because the Christian life is not natural, it's supernatural. The Christian life is supernatural in all all regards. In every area of the Christian life, it takes supernatural strength to be effective for the kingdom of heaven. You can't do it in your own strength. You can't do it in the arm of flesh. You have to put your faith in the arm of the Almighty God. You have to say, oh God, strengthen me, your servant, tonight as I'm listening to these people. As I'm receiving your word, strengthen me by your spirit. Let me receive something from heaven. Let me be touched and changed. Let me receive a fresh empowerment tonight. In the name of Jesus, this is the hour for us to arise. The Christian life is supernatural. We cannot do this in the natural. It is wholehearted, completely supernatural. And it takes a supernatural strength that you can only receive in Christ. Because isn't it interesting that Paul says, be strong in the Lord. He doesn't say be strong out of the Lord. He doesn't say be strong in your own mind. He doesn't say be strong in yourself. No, he says be strong in the Lord. The Amplified Classic, if I can get there quickly, if this will allow me to. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. I want to say this to you quickly because it, it, it shows us. It says, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through what? Through your union with Him. We are strengthened through our union with Christ Jesus. Your union with Him. If I'm joined to the Lord, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 7 says, if them who are one spirit of the Lord or Him who are joined to the Lord are one spirit with Him. Jesus is not weak. 
Jesus is not struggling. Jesus is not is like just maintaining. No, he's doing well. It is well with Jesus. And if the Bible says that you're joined to Jesus, best believe that that strength is coming upon you tonight. Best believe that all weaknesses I'm speaking into your spirit is leaving your family, is leaving your mortal body even right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, because Bishop David Odepo likes to say this, and I want to quote him tonight, that life is not funfair. Life is warfare. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities in the heavenly places. There's a war that's on right now. We're not fighting to attain victory. We're fighting from victory. We're enforcing the kingdom of heaven in this hour. And I feel like I'm about to punch the devil in the face tonight. That's why I'm moving my fist like this, not to make you scared, but to let the devil know that the army of God is rising up in Jesus' name, that the reign of His glory is coming, that a move of God is stirring, that even in your homes tonight, God's marking you, God's setting you apart, God's shooting you into your destiny in the name of Jesus. You are ordained and appointed to assault the devil. Write that in the comment section. That came to me now. I am anointed to assault the devil. Stick that to Satan tonight. He's been assaulting you and afflicting you tonight. The tables turn in Jesus' name. He's been assaulting you and causing you many problems. Even right now as the word of faith is getting deep into your spirit. Faith is not for you to be comforted in the situations of life. No, faith puts you in command. Faith puts you in a place of power and authority. The God kind of faith rises in your spirit to speak and to command. You are anointed to assault the devil. Write that on WhatsApp. Write that on Instagram. Write that on Facebook. Get a tattooed on your body. I'm anointed to assault. That was a joke. I'm anointed to assault the devil. He's a defeated foe. He is weak. You are powerful because of the one that dwells on the inside of you. In the name of Jesus. I want to give you these four things quickly. And Brad already made mention of the one. And, and so it builds perfectly. So that's why I wanted to give this to you quickly. How to be strong in the Lord. Because it's all good and well for us to speak about that. It's all good and well for us to say something, you know, about being strong in the Lord. But if we don't empower you through principles, if we don't empower you through instruction from the Word of God, you'll be saying be strong in the Lord, but your life will be marked by weakness. But that's not going to be your story. How to be strong in the Lord. Four things. Quickly write these down. Brad already alluded to the first one. I see all of you on Facebook. We love you. Thank you for not jumping off. Thank you that I can see your comments. Come on, write that in the comment section like Jessica. I'm assaulting you, devil. I'm anointed. Amen. That's right. I love that. Rochelle says, I'm anointed to assault. I love that. Really, man. I'm going to put that on Facebook as soon as I get off of you. Four things, or rather five things, I think. We'll see how far we get. How to be strong in the Lord. Number one, Brad alluded to it already, the Word. The Word of God is spiritual life. It is spiritual sustenance, and it provokes strength in your spirit. A scripture that I so love is Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. So now, brethren, Paul speaking, I commit you unto God and to the word of His grace, the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E. I commit you to God and to the word of His grace. That is what? Able to build you up. In the original Greek, it says to edify. This word stirs up strength in your spirit when you feel that you're weak. You know, even as we're praying and fasting this week, we're not growing weaker and weaker. We're growing stronger and stronger because we're going to be like Job. He said, I have not departed from the commandments of your lips. I treasure your words more than my necessary food. And this word, when you treasure it, when you pr prioritize it, when you get it burning in your heart, not just burning in a book, but when you get it into your spirit, strength rises up. It builds you up. It takes you from a place of being downcast and puts you on, your, puts you on the firm foundation for your feet to stand that even amidst the storms of life, you will be found standing. See, we don't live by some of His words. We live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of, mouth of God. I wrote this down. The incorruptible seed of God's Word produces a harvest of supernatural strength in the life of every believer. The incorruptible seed produces a harvest of supernatural strength in the life of every believer but understand something a seed cannot go to work until it's sown so this seed which is the word of God offers you divine strength from heaven strength that can't be bought from a gym strength that can't be bought from some supplement place but a strength you know I was, I was gonna start naming brands and stuff but 
you know, whey protein can only help you to an extent. This Word of God is like anabolic steroids in the supernatural. It builds your spirit man up so you're ready to be charged up. You're ready to defeat the devil or rather enforce the defeat. You're ready to hammer his head in. You're ready to stomp on his head wherever you go. This incorruptible seed can only go to work in your life when it's sown into your heart. God said to Ezekiel, let the words that I've spoken to you, receive them into your heart. We must receive them into the soil of our heart and then it goes to work. Number two, prayer. So firstly is the word as Pastor Brad had mentioned. So I'm building on to what Pastor Brad has said. The word of God, how to be strong in the Lord. Number one, the word. Number two, prayer. Prayer. Jude 20, but you, beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You see, prayer doesn't give you faith. Prayer stirs up your faith. Prayer stirs that faith up just as when, you know, when a remote control runs flat, you charge that thing and you plug it into, an, into a source and it gets charged up. As you pray every single day, you're building up your spirit, man. You're being strengthened in the supernatural realm. You're being stirred up in your heart. You don't have to wait for a preacher to preach to you. All you can do is start praying in the Holy Ghost. When you wake up, I'm not looking for breakfast. I'm going to start off in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to feed my spirit, man. I'm going to build up myself in my most holy faith. Tonight, I'm not going out this morning. I'm not going backwards as I go to work, but I'm moving from glory to glory, from strength to strength, that in this hour of adversity, I will not faint. Woo, glory to God. The Word, prayer, number three, praise. The Bible says this in Psalm 22, 3, but you are holy, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Another one says he inhabits the praises of his people. Man, you hear us quoted all the time. But understand something, praise provokes the presence of God. And what I want you to recognize about the presence of God, the Bible says in His presence, Psalm 16, 11, in His presence there is fullness of joy and at His right hand pleasures forevermore. So when you praise God, it provokes His presence. When you provoke His presence, His presence brings fullness of joy. And Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. We need to live in a place of joy. You need to live in a perpetual state of joy because joy ensures strength. So when you're a person of perpetual praise, when you're lifting up your hands and giving Jesus the praise He deserves, His presence is provoked. Your position, number one, then His presence is provoked by your praise. And then His presence comes. And in His presence, there is fullness of joy. So joy comes. That's why David was unstoppable, because David was a man of praise. That's why he could slay giants, kill bears, and slay, and slay um, lions. That's why he was a trouble. That's why people didn't like, that's why the enemy didn't like him, because he was a man of praise. And praise will cause you to operate in joy. And joy will cause for your strength to be in operation. The last one, the Spirit of God. Four things. The Word, how to be strong in the Lord. The Word, prayer, praise, and the Spirit. Romans 8, 11, But if the Spirit of Him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. Another translation says He will give life to your mortal body. Zechariah chapter 4, and verse 6, It's not by might, nor is it by power, but it's by your Spirit by His Spirit. You see, when we live not just Spirit-filled, but Spirit-led, we begin to operate in the Spirit's might. We begin to operate in a supernatural strength that comes from heaven. Because I'm not just Spirit-filled, I'm Spirit-led. And as I move by the Holy Ghost, as I live in the Spirit, I am strengthened perpetually. I operate in the heavens kind of strength, the God kind of strength, the Spirit of God kind of strength, and it cannot be stopped. You know what that kind of strength does? It's the kind of strength that came upon Samson, that when new ropes were put on him, the Bible says that the Spirit of God came upon him mightily, and those ropes fell off like flax, and that which was bound on his roofs broke off. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, strength comes. You see, this is what we need to operate in this hour because the Word builds you, prayer stirs you, praise positions you, and the Spirit quickens you. The Word builds you, prayer stirs you, praise provokes and positions you, 
<laughs> and the Spirit quickens you. There is a realm of strength that you can operate in tonight and I'm speaking to all of you that are with us. That even right now, stretch forth your hands to your TV, wherever you are. If you're watching on your mobile device, stretch forth your hands to your mobile device now. Stretch forth your hands in your home, even if you feel like a fool, rather be a strong fool. Amen, not a weak fool. Stretch forth your hands, families that are watching us right now in your homes. You're watching on Facebook, on YouTube, on Faith Now, Sky 594, however it is that you're tuning in, stretch forth your hands. Father, as your servants, we loose the Word of God. I pray, oh God, let the spirit of faith come upon your people's hearts. Lord, send forth strength from heaven even right now. That same spirit that came upon Samson, he now dwells on the inside of us in fullness. I pray for a strength to rise up in the hearts of God's people tonight. You shall not give up. You shall not faint. But you shall be raised up tonight in the name of Jesus. That's right, Lucia, I speak to you in the name of Jesus. Be strengthened. Michaelo, I speak to you. Be strengthened. Cynthia Governor, I speak to you. Be strengthened. Salome, I speak to you on Facebook. Be strengthened. Elfie, I speak to you on Facebook. Be strengthened. Mano Augustine, be strengthened. Laverne, be strengthened. Rochelle Naidu, be strengthened. Ava Hogg, be strengthened. Edward Johannesson, be strengthened in the name of Jesus. Virginia, receive strength from heaven tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Every single one of you on YouTube, Elise, Ricardo, Edgar, every single one of you. Shobana, be strengthened in the name of Jesus. I pray for a power to come upon you even right now. In Jesus' name. Shakuskata. In Jesus' name. And I love how you ended with the Spirit, how the Spirit quickens you, because the word that God gave me tonight that I just want to share with you briefly is actually what Paul speaks about it in Ephesians 3. But you know, I'm reminded what God says to Joshua in Joshua 1 verse 9. He said to Joshua, be be very strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. And he reminded Joshua of this multiple times throughout the book of Joshua. And you know, referring to the people of the Old Testament, now us in a new covenant, living under a new covenant because of what Jesus has done. We have something. Every single believer now, because of what Jesus has done, has can receive something that not all the people in the Old Testament could, and that is the Holy Spirit. And we are to live a life led by the Holy Spirit because you know what the Holy Spirit does when He comes and fills you? He brings with Him power. He brings with Him strength. And I love what Paul, Paul says in Ephesians 3 verse 14 to 19. Listen to what he says. Ephesians 3 verse 14 to 19. When I think of all of this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and earth and on earth. Now listen to this. I pray that from His glorious, unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength from through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand all as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. As your roots, as your foundation grows so deep and remains in God's love, what does it say? It'll keep you strong. And even as the word goes on to say, from His unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength. How does He do this? Through His Holy Spirit. He will empower you with inner strength through His Holy Spirit. But you see, it all starts with God's love. This is the foundation of it all. Because from there, when you know how much He loves you, when you walk in this relationship with Him, everything flows from that. And the strength that you receive from the Holy Spirit is the strength that you push on, is the strength that keeps you going, even amidst circumstances, even amidst situations, because you know how much your God loves you. You know that He is for you. You know that He has a plan for your life. And you know that He has infused you. He he has placed strength and He has placed power on the inside of you, child of God, that flows 
flows through His Spirit, which is on the inside of you. And in verse 19, it says, May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Fullness of life and power, that inner strength to push you through any situation. And you know, last night, as I was reading in the book of Acts, and God revealed this to me, He showed me a strength that came from the apostles. And you know what strength does? Strength causes boldness to rise up. From strength comes boldness. Because when you read in Acts 4, after the upper room experience, Peter steps out after they filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter steps out and he preaches. And on that day, 3,000 were added to the church. Then the apostles, Peter goes about preaching and teaching and working in the power of God. And then they called in by the council because of what they're doing. The religious leaders, they didn't like what he was doing. And listen to what they pray. Acts 4 verse 29 to 31. This is what they went back and prayed after they faced opposition, after they faced a situation. They prayed this. And now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us, your servants, great boldness. Great boldness in preaching your word. Not to draw back, not to take a step back, but to press on doing what these people were telling them not to do. They needed another another infusion of boldness to go on preaching even harder than they did before. They weren't worried what the world was telling them. They wanted to keep pressing on. They needed strength. They needed boldness to continue doing because they knew it can't come from them. It has to come from Him, from the Father. And they say, stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the Word of God with boldness. Because when you see when that boldness came on the inside of them, when that Holy, when the Holy Spirit started stirring up, that inner strength started stirring up, what arose up? boldness. They were set ablaze. They were set on fire to go out in the strength of the Holy Spirit. That inner strength brought about a boldness. And that's what keeps you pressing on. That's what keeps you pressing forward. That's what keeps you saying no to the things of the world and yes to the things of God to keep you going forward. Because in this world, there's crazy stuff. There's many different opinions. There's many ways that want to drag you down, want to pull you apart, want to it caused you to be in a place of unbelief, but this strength, this boldness causes you to press on. And you know, some synonyms for the word strength is a firmness, a steadfastness, power. That is what is inside of you, child of God, from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit releases that strength, releases that power, so you do not remain weak. You do not draw back. You do not become vulnerable, but you press on in faith and in strength towards what God has for you. You press on just like the apostles did in the face of opposition. You press on amidst everything in this world. And even as you've heard the word so powerfully tonight about strength, being strong, you may be asking, but how do I do this? I'm not in that place. I don't know Jesus. I don't know the one who you're talking about. Or you may have known him a few years back, but you've drifted away. You've allowed the world to grab a hold of you. Your flesh is pulling. And listen, that's what the flesh is going to do. The flesh is going to pull you towards the things of the world. But that's why the Spirit has to take the lead. That's why you have to position yourself as His child and be led by His Spirit. And if that is you saying, I want to know how to be strong in the Lord. I want to have the same faith that you're speaking about. I also want to say yes to God and no to the world. There's something that Jesus said you must do. Jesus said that when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you will be saved. There's no other way to heaven but through Him. That's why God sent His Son. There's no other way. There's no other way to receive the Holy Spirit than first saying yes to Jesus. There's no other way to be able to stand strong in the Lord if you are not positioned in Him. 
You need to know Him. You need to be positioned in Him. And if that is you, I want you to repeat a prayer after me. Because just as the Word of God says, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, and you will be saved. That is what you have to do tonight. You have to make that decision to come to God, to say, I'm laying everything down. I don't want to be strong in myself. I don't want to rely on my own strength, but I want to rely on you, God. I want your strength to flow through me. I want your power, your work, your confidence. My confidence is so founded in your love because He loves you. That's why He's given you this life to live. That's why He's placed purpose. And He's placed His Holy Spirit inside of you because He loves you so much that you don't have to do it by yourself in your own strength. So if that is you tonight, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Father... Father, I believe, I believe that you sent, that you sent your, son Jesus your Son Jesus to die for me. To die for me. And, tonight, and tonight, I make the decision, I make the decision to, repent of my sins, to repent of my sins, to turn away from the world, to turn away from the and, world to turn to you, Jesus. and to turn to you, Jesus. And as you came to earth, and as you came to, earth to, die for me, to die for me, you are now seated, you are now seated at the right hand of the Father. You are not dead. You are not dead. You are alive. You are alive. And now I live, now I live in this new life that you have given me. I walk in victory. I walk in victory. I walk in confidence. I walk in confidence. I walk in power. I walk in power. And even right now, and even right now, I ask you to fill me. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit and power. With your Holy Ghost and power. I have strength. I have strength. <laughs> I am a child of God. I am a child of God. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. If you Amen. said that prayer, I want you to send us an email. Details are coming on the screen right in the comment section on Facebook, on YouTube. Well, however you may be watching that, you said that prayer. Don't do life alone. It's not meant to be done alone. You are a part of the family of God and we want to walk this road with you. So send us your details so we can get into contact with you. I want you to get your communion elements as we go into a time of communion. As you've just given your life to the Lord, we want to say all of heaven rejoices with you. We are so thrilled that you are part of the family of God. And as every single person has been building tonight, speaking about being strong in the Lord. And I know that Pastor Nile mentioned this as well as Pastor Brad with, re- with regards to Ephesians 6. But I want to bring something to you. Tonight, as we read Ephesians 6 verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. We can see here that Paul, before he addresses the weaponry, he addresses the power. And then then it goes on to all the pieces of the armor of God. And it's very interesting to note that word finally, so often we say, be strong in the Lord. And we miss that whole part in the beginning. It says, finally, my brethren. It's very important words, those. Finally, that, it speaks about it is the most important matter at hand. It's, it's not just the last, but it's the last most important matter at hand. And you know, Ephesians is filled with loads of power. It is filled with so much good stuff. We can see as we as you read the book of Ephesians, you'll see it is speaking about being chosen by God, being predestined by God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the eternal plan of God, the fivefold ministry, us being filled with the Holy Spirit, interpersonal relationships. Yet, right, it's saying, Finally, it's speaking about the last most important matter at hand that if you forgot anything, if you forget anything, everything I've just said, speaking about the fivefold, speaking about being filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking about the eternal plan of God, being predestined by God, don't forget this one thing. Like, if you can forget anything, but Paul's saying, don't forget this final thing. Don't forget this most important thing. Don't forget, because you see, we can see that the Ephesians, they they weren't behaving like victorious people. Their heads were filled with a lot of information, but on a personal life, in, in their personal lives, they were struggling a lot. They were struggling. And that's why Paul is saying, finally, this, if you forget everything, if you're forgetting about the grace of God, being predestined by God, if you're forgetting about the fivefold ministry, just don't forget this. This is very important. And then he goes on and he says a very important word. He says, finally, my 
brethren. When he says my brethren, he's speaking about a brotherhood. He's speaking about a brotherhood. He's saying, finally, my brethren, my fellow fighters, you know, Brad, Pastor Nile, and Pastor Taylor, they are my fellow fighters in the Lord. They, my fellow fighters, they a brother, a sister, a comrade. He's saying, finally, don't forget this important thing, my comrade, my fellow fighter. It says, be strong. And as Pastor now said, it is a command, be strong. It actually, it pictures this, which I absolutely love. It pictures a whole army, uh, literally the power of a whole army, not just one person. It pictures of a whole army, the power of a whole army being deposited in you. Yes, in you. It it speaks about an inner strengthening, a supernatural enablement. It speaks about explosive human power. It comes with enormous energy, produces extraordinary results deposited in you. It's a strength. It's not just a strength that's like floating in the universe somewhere. No, it's being deposited into you. It's supernatural. It is fashioned just for you. And then it says, in the Lord, this power is only, only obtained in the Lord, in the Lord. So as it's been deposited in you, it is being deposited in you by the Lord. It's been obtained by the Lord, only through the Lord. And then it goes, in power, that word power speaks about strength, power, victory over something, taking it by force eruptive, tangible. It is a demonstrated power. That's exactly what God has done for us. And then it says, in His might, His might speaks about one who is able, an ability to overcome anything, a power, a great strength, a great force, a great ability. So when the Lord is saying, God is saying to us tonight in Ephesians 6 verse 10, finally, remember, in as, as he's written the whole book of Ephesians, Paul, he's, he's saying as he wrote about grace, he's written about the fivefold ministry, being empowered by the Holy Spirit, everything. Just don't forget this thing. If you forget anything, don't forget this one thing. And then he says, my brethren, what is that speaking about? My fellow fighter in the Lord, my brethren, my sister, my, fe- my fellow comrade. It says, be strong. What is that? It's a command. He's saying, be strong, be strengthened with this explosive power, strengthened from the Lord. It only is obtained from the Lord. It is only obtained from the Lord. And in Exodus 15 verse 2, it says, the Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise Him. My Father's God and I will exalt Him. I really believe tonight that you are receiving a new strength in Jesus' name. The strength, the power of a whole army is deposited in you by God Himself, by the Lord Himself. You are, He is obtained, it is only obtained by God. And may we remember this tonight. If we forget everything, may we remember this thing tonight, that we finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might in Jesus' name. And as you get ready to take the bread and the cup, I want you to know this that this is strength because of what Jesus did for you on the cross of Calvary. That is why you can receive that strength. That is why you can obtain that supernatural strength, that supernatural power of a whole army because of what He did for you on the cross of Calvary. We don't take that lightly because because of what He did, we can be strong in the Lord no matter what we may be facing, no matter what's staring us in the face, no matter what giant is there, we can truly be strong in the Lord because of what Jesus has done for us. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for who you are in our lives. I thank you, God, that even right now, all across the airways, you are busy strengthening people right now. Those that are facing various things, various giants, God, I thank you for a supernatural strength to infuse them in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that they would stand strong. I thank you, Lord, that even their confession 
their confession will change, that they won't say, I'm tired, I'm weak, I can't do this, but they'll say, I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of His might because of what you did on the cross of Calvary. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. You may partake of the bread. Thank you, Father, that your blood was shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. I thank you that we can be strong in the Lord. I thank you, Lord, that because of what you did, that we can be whole, that we can be forgiven, that we can truly be set free, that we can live in divine health, in healing, that we can be prosperous in every area of our lives, every single area, we can truly be prosperous and victorious in Jesus' name. You may partake of the cup. Hallelujah. Come on, wherever you are. I want to quickly read a scripture to you as we come close to the end. I know that you've been blessed tonight. You know, every time I hear any, any of the four of us quote that scripture, uh, Ephesians 6, verse 10 and 11, but be strong in the Lord. Something jumps in me because this is the hour for us to truly be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Right now, the banking details are coming on your screen. I want to give you an opportunity to sow a seed by faith tonight. And I want to read to you, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6, the Bible says this, the point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. As it is written, He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Listen to this now. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. The Lord said this to me the one time and I preached an offering message on it. And even as I was reading the scripture, it quickened back to me. God doesn't multiply what you store. God multiplies what you sow. He is a multiplier of that which you sow. As you sow tonight by faith, not out of anyone pressuring you, but out of the freedom of your heart tonight, as you give to the Lord and as you sow a seed by faith, He will multiply the seed sown in the name of Jesus. I want to encourage you, if you want to sow tonight, engage the Holy Ghost as He's speaking to you. Never listen to a man. If He tries to tell you a mount, run away from Him. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Sow what He tells you to sow. Don't give anything more than what He tells you. Don't give anything less than what He tells you. Give exactly what He tells you and watch what God will do. All of you that are with us, the QR code is on your screen of how you can give. You can also go to our website, myfaith.tv, hit the give button, or on, on Facebook, you can simply hashtag donate tonight. But engage in the principle of giving and watch what God will do in the name of Jesus. If you thought July was blessed, get ready. July is about to be more blessed in the name of Jesus. You're about to see the hand of God in a greater measure. You're about to see the goodness of God in a greater measure in the name of Jesus. So wherever you are, before you log off, as you're giving, when you're finished sowing, I want to encourage you, hit the like button now on Facebook. All of our people on social media, let's blow up Facebook right at the end of tonight. All of you on YouTube, that I'm using that as a I don't even know what the right English word is. Don't, let's not blow it up physically, but we're going <laughs> to, through the likes and stuff, my English, is, I should have listened in English class. Whatever that word was, I can't remember what it was. But I want you to quickly hit the like button tonight. It's Jubilee July, as David Lukey just wrote in the comment section there. Come on, hit the heart button. Hit the like button on YouTube quickly. I want you to hit the like button as a sign of praise unto Jesus. We're going to end with a faith band tonight. So quickly, hit the like button. Hit the heart button. Let me see you quickly. I, I'm not going to pitch over to them until I see some hearts flying in the comment section. On YouTube, quickly hit the like button. Give Jesus some praise. There we go. I see Roshan Naidu is doing it. Hit your favorite emojis in the comment section. YouTube, come on. Hit the like button. Throw some comments in the comment section. We thank you. We love you. There's only one thing to say, and I, this is like the third time I've ever said in my life. But Faith Man, take us home in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. 